2017's Columbus is a deeply humanist film that captures art, architecture, and our relationship with them in painstakingly precise cinematography. It tells the story of Jin, son of an architectural scholar, to the city of Columbus when his father fell into a coma, where he meets Casey, a young girl native to the city who holds her education to take care of her mother. The film follows the two as they learn more about each other and the modernist mecca that is Columbus. The director's cinephilia can certainly be seen in the film. It carries a very distinct visual language with contemplative sequences and unconventional shot compositions. The shots that I want to highlight are in a sequence where Jin is shown exploring his father's hotel suite, specifically the way it plays with framing. One line that perfectly summarizes the framing principle used here is when Casey describes one of the Serenade churches as See, it's asymmetrical, but it's also still balanced. Take this shot as an example, we can see that the composition creates an unbalanced balance with its camera placement. The windows on the left with the mirror on the right reflecting back. Or here, where Jin is placed on the left side of the frame, with a lamp and its reflection on the right side. Both composition creates a lot of negative space around Jin, something that I would get into later. Which brings us to the use of off-screen space. Director Kogonada chose to frame Jin with a static camera as he moves around the suite, picking up items that belong to his father. There are shots where we can't even see his face. Furthermore, a traditional approach to scenes like this would be to use insert shots showing objects in question, such as close-ups of the notebook or the camera. Kogonada, however, chose just to show Jin looking at the objects themselves without giving us any further information, sometimes with the objects barely even in frame. The static camera placement and long shots also encourages the audience to explore different parts of the frame it enhances the realism and breaks cinematic invisibility at the same time as it calls attention to the frame itself. One can't be blamed to expect characters to be in frame or simply to have close-ups of the items in question. The scenes are capturing Jin's complex relationship with his father, who we know hasn't been the most present for Jin due to the nature of his work. The professor is both emotionally and physically absent throughout the film as he is in a coma. Kogonada, however, uses objects to represent the professor's lingering presence in the room as well as in Jin's life. As I mentioned earlier, Jin is placed in a frame with medium shots with a lot of negative space around him. This can be seen as a reflection of his character's state of mind as he is not particularly fulfilled in terms of career nor in terms of his relationship with his father. The usage of empty space to show how a character is absent is something that many filmmakers do. Eduardo was the president of the Harvard Investors Association and he was also my best friend. It also forces viewers to reconsider what is and isn't important in the film. Another very memorable scene where absence is used is when Casey explains to Jin why the bank is one of her favorite buildings. The audio is cut off just when she explains her love for the glass fortress. All in all, the motif of lack carries throughout the film. This is a good place to mention the famous 20th century Japanese filmmaker Yasuhiro Ozu and Kogonada's relationship with him. The influence is even right there in his pseudonym, a portmanteau of Ozu's screenwriting partner. Columbus was certainly heavily inspired by Ozu's signature style, like the use of pillow shots, environmental non-sequitur transitional shots of sometimes empty rooms and cityscape, or how frame within a frame is utilized, with characters placed in tight corridors and doorways. There are so much more about Columbus that we don't have the time to get into here. Great films are always influenced by other great films in the past. To see a film made with such passion for cinema, yet in a style that is not one bit dull is refreshing to say the least.